So we're in Yarra State Forest and what an absolute gem of a spot. We had a bit of a laugh because we thought Jerry put the gear stick through his roof because he hit that hard. I don't think it would have mattered what you had. You were still going to slide around and we were sliding quite a bit. <laughs> and sure enough, you had to be popped the back tyre and done a good job of it. Today we're up at the Yarra State Forest near Warburton and it's a spectacular spot. We're up in the Victorian high country, we're 80 k's east of Melbourne and what an absolute gem of a spot. We get here, get into the forest and it was all misty and foggy all throughout the trees. So the sun shining through, it's so picturesque, it was just unbelievable. The expectation is that, especially with the weather the last week or so, the tracks are going to be wet, going to be a bit of slippage. Who knows, there might be a bit of mud that we have to winch our way through. First thing that it reminded me of was the alt pace. It's very, very similar. I think the only difference that we found today was that the mud and the clay was brown, not black. It's wet, it's muddy. We've turned into the first track this morning and straight away we're looking at these mud holes full of water in front of us. Oh, hang on. Cake handled it really well. It is very, very wet, but the sun is coming through and it's looking like it's going to be a pretty awesome day. Look at that beautiful sunlight coming through. That's just magic. Sun beaming through the trees, <laughs> bright lights have to get the sunnies out. We've had a lot of trees come down in a recent storm. The main thing for us was making sure that you had as much traction as you can, so keep a distance from the guy that's in front of you. Create that gap, create that safety, communicate on the radio. It's slippery down through here, guys. Just space the cars out, take it nice and easy. So we're just going to take our time here, let the car do its bit. Starting to get some logs on the road, watch out for that. Quite tight along here. That's all right. All good. There was a number of trees that we found falling across the track. Quite a few of them, though, had been cleared. Whether they'd been cut through and cleared to make room for literally just the car to fit through, or some of them that there was chicken tracks that had gone around the outside of them to be able to get around and continue on. There's a big tree. We got on the track, yeah, the track was a little bit tight, there were a lot of trees down. So we had to actually adjust to get around some of the obstacles that we obviously couldn't get past. There was trees down all over the place, but uh, I'm pretty glad that I had the road safe underbody protection. These are actually a trial, and the guys have been very clever. What they've done, it's a three-piece section, but covers all the way back, covers all the things it should cover put some flutes and scallop in them to allow the airflow around the transmission. Not only does it protect the transmission, but it keeps it cool as well. It allows the airflow through. Ooh, hang on. Like you got the bass plates on. We got through some of the trees and got around them and gave us a bit of hope. There's, there's a tree down, which I think I can get over, but then there's a whole series of trees, which I think is going to stop us. Have a quick look, see if there's a root around it, but yeah, it doesn't look good. No, I don't think there's any way around this one. Okay, looks like we've got a bit of trouble ahead. Convoy, I reckon we're going to have to turn around here. Looks like a dead end. Oh, wow, look at the tree up behind it. One, two, three, four trees down, and then a fifth one up the top there. That's just an absolute mess because by the time we got to the end of it, where we wanted to go, the only way to describe it was it looked like someone had put a lean-to hut made out of the biggest ash trees you've ever seen. 
the track was absolutely, completely and utterly demolished. If somebody's going to get on like that track, it's going to be a long, long time because it's a massive clearance job. That's just crazy. We're not getting through that. Let's turn around and get out of here. We've had absolutely huge storms come through about three and a half weeks ago now. You'd love to have a few chainsaws and a bit more time. Oof. Fallen tree, fallen tree, fallen tree. This area got absolutely smashed. I'm glad they've chainsawed up some of these tracks. There's a lot of trees down from the storm damage. The amount of work that DPI and Parks Victoria have around the state clearing the trees after the storm will be phenomenal. I reckon there's years in the making of clearing. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Four-wheel drivers have already had a good crack at clearing most of it. We can head back up. There was that turn-off we passed earlier. I reckon we'll give that a crack. I looked behind me and I thought, you know what? Got out the chainsaw, put on some of the safety gear and got out and just cleared some of the track behind us. I've got a small chainsaw. It's more of a pruner than a chainsaw, but I managed to clear just some of the branches, some of the tracks we've been going around. What I'd say to you about safety is a good set of gloves and just helmet, ear protection, just a visor at the front, stop any chips coming up to you and just take your time. Always have a look at the branches, make sure there's no load on them, that they're not going to bounce up and hit you in the face. On the way again. Add a little bit there. Second track we did was Crooked Creek. It wasn't overly difficult, but there was some pretty deep ruts. If you were to be down here by yourself and there's been a fresh rain, I think some of those ruts would be a fair bit bigger than what they were today. Watch the trees on the side, it's so slippery. I think we're a little bit blessed because there was enough rain to make it interesting, but there wasn't too much rain recently to make it just impassable. That track was really slippery. At one stage we were sort of like going sideways, going a bit high. You could feel us sliding away, but we kept the momentum up. But he got as far as he could. He was just about up on, on the bank there. I think he was concerned about that canopy because that's his pride and joy. More trees down. Oh well, all adds to the adventure. <laughs> You go down to the woods today, you're in for a big surprise. Copy, Simon. Go ahead, Matt. Mike's right front tyre is probably got under 10 feet on it. Matt noticed the guys, Mick, think your right tyre is a bit low? I go, oh yeah, what's wrong with it? And I look out and there, yeah, there's yeah, zero air inside it. You so say he's probably gone through one of those ruts and probably collected a little bit of mud or dirt of the bead of the tyre and it's probably letting a little bit of pressure out. So I've overinflated the tyre, got the beat and reseal, and I've just put a little bit more air in it than I normally would. I've been running kind of 15, 16 psi out here today, so I've put 25 back into it. The guys went for a drive up and down the road just to see if it's set. He didn't get the opportunity to let his tyres down again, so he's basically driving with his tyres on one side of the car just about fully pumped up, and the others is down to about 16 psi. Surprised he wasn't going around a circle. We spend a lot of time building these trucks. It's great when they're working well, but it is incredibly frustrating when they don't work well, and even more so when it's an electrical issue. So we've just done a hard reset on the battery. I've downloaded the app and logged into it, and it's not giving me a whole set of figures. It's telling me it's 99% full. It's getting charged, and it is just charging because the fridge is drawing off it. Hey, Jerry, how's my left there on that log? Can you see? Yeah, mate, the 11.15 bus are getting past that. Good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hook it hard. <laughs> that was ace. <laughs> I got the line right and just drove round straight away where a few of the others had to have a few shots of it, but we won't mention that. <laughs> Bit tight. Now we drop off. And dropping off was closer to the truth than any of us expected. While this was the last fallen tree we would encounter, a steeper, slipperier and more ominous challenge lay ahead 
that would drop us uncontrollably to the valley floor with only one possible way out. Fantastic little lunch spot, stopped up here on top of the hill. It's actually quite warm outside, I suppose, because it's been so cold all morning. Was this slippery the other day? Look, this first section like this gets a fair bit of sunlight. It's quite dry. Yeah. There's plenty of traction here, but as we get down lower, it just got slippery and slippery. And by the time we got down the bottom, it was just ice skating. So I'm in low gear first, and just letting the car do its bit, not touching the brake. No problem, that was great. Well, we could lose the hill descent. It's a different sort of four-wheel driving, but still shows a bit of a point. You wouldn't want to come out here without a winch on your vehicle, would you? Nah, definitely not. Like, it's a bit tricky now. Imagine if you're out here and you've got a bit of rain. Who knows what it would do? Certainly, yeah. You need that insurance policy, mate. And how do you go about selecting your winch for your vehicle? There are so many different rated winches. By rule of thumb, the industry standard is that you're really looking for something that's about one and a half times the vehicle weight. The optimum winch that you want to put on the car, probably the industry standard is about nine and a half thousand pounds, which is around about 4.6 tonnes. We're coming down Crooked Creek track, it's the descent, and you're basically heading into, down into a creek, uh, wet, wet and wetter. You can have the best tyres on the car, you can have the diff lockers galore, low range gear. I still ended up inside one of the washouts. Managed to reverse myself out of it and get a little bit more momentum going forward. When you see the car in front of you slide, slide into it, I don't know whether I'm going to get stuck or not. You know, these guys have got a little bit more clearance than what I have. Okay, let's see if we can get left. like planing sideways there for a bit. The, just a little bit of acceleration at the right time to straighten me up and we got through it pretty easy. Now on this vehicle you're running the new Nava lights. We are, we've got uh, the Mark IIs, we've got two of the 215s and two of the 180s on here. And yeah, they're amazing. Performance wise, you know, you just don't really get much better. They've got 30% brighter and 20% longer beam pattern, and they also come with the black translucent covers that you see there. You still get about 20% performance through the covers, but we're able to take the covers off and swap them out and put the clear ones on and if we do want to get full output of light, but it does give it a nice stealth look. If you've got a rear diff lock, now's the time to turn it on. Coming down to this corner, it's not steep, it's still slippery. We've got to hug the left-hand bank. And once you get around that left hand bank, every traction aid you've got and put the power down. Oh, go, go, go. <laughs> oh, hard left, hard left. That's it. Straighten her up. Go away from that bank. Go, into it, into it. Mud flicking everywhere. I've got mud on the roof, I've got mud on the windows, and that's just part of being out here on a day like today. The next section, that was that, that was challenging to say the least. The first thing I looked up went, oh my god, this is gonna be hairy, because I could see all the mud tracks and it was rough. Flicking the wheel a bit back and forwards flicking the mud out the side, giving myself different areas of traction. And it just powered up the hill, but it was, it was, a, it was an awesome hill climb. Really did enjoy it. Swung into it, stayed high, and just kept the foot to the floor, pressed every button that was in the car, I think even turned the wipers on, uh, just to see if it give me more traction. Got up it, but it, yeah, I would hate to see it with a little bit more water on it. I think you'd spend the whole day winching. Okay, here we go. Well, I was the last one up on that hill, and it was sliding around a little bit, and I got stuck in the ruts and was over to one side. And... 
things seem to be going really good. And like I, I did hit the bank a little bit. And come over the air that I popped the tyre, never felt it. I was just, I just kept on going and I probably got two thirds of the way up before we stopped. And sure enough, yeah, we popped the back tyre and done a good job of it. Stop there. Yep, done a bead. Coming up the steep clay, muddy section, after the turn, a couple of the guys had gone up, I got up, we sort of got out of the cars and walked back to see the next one coming up, and Jerry had popped a bead, unfortunately, on his car. I'm glad, yeah, it wasn't me, someone else for a change. I think at one stage, Jerry had a cameraman chasing him, going, Jerry, Jerry, you've lost a, you've lost a tire, it's gone off your bead. He was sideways. But that was inevitable, considering how hard he was driving it up that hill but he wasn't stopping where he was stopping me. because <laughs> He needed that bit of momentum to get it up onto the flat ground. He knew he needed to get on flat ground to jack it. A lot of mud, we did the right thing. We got some flat ground there, we made sure that everything was stable, the handbrake was on, and then we got the jack out. Did it methodically, it took our time, we jacked it up, cleaned out as much mud as we could away from the bead of the tyre and the bead of the rim. The mud inside the rim is definitely going to cause a balance issue, but not on the tracks we're doing. So we'll clean out as much of the mud as we can behind the rim, clean out the bead of the tyre, and then we'll reseat this bead. A couple of screwdrivers is a good way to start to get in behind there. So before we jack up the tyre, we'll get as much of this stuff out as we can. And a little bit of mud, you can get some water in there to wash it out, but a little bit of mud actually helps, acts like a little bit of lubrication, just like a bit of grease to help you get the tyre back on. Of course, to get a good seat, you want to make sure you get as much of this mud out as you can. So it's such time we were happy enough to throw some air at it and let's even get the seal. It took a fair while and the end of the bead wasn't popping and we pumped in, as it turned out, about 46 PSI of power and it hadn't done it. We decided to just to drop the jack down a little bit, put a bit of pressure on the tyre to see whether that would help. When we did that, she popped and then we were able to sort of like check the tyre pressure, let the air out, drop it to a, a normal working pressure and then we had another crack again up the rest of the hill. Honey, I'm home. We made our way up onto BS Fireline track, absolutely bone dry for a bit, and then all of a sudden, bang, we're back into slippery wet stuff again. The thing I found was the washouts on the road where you come up and over were huge, they were massive. You're coming up and over and I think you could have parked a car on the other side and you wouldn't see it until you're sitting on top of it. We were sliding around everywhere. I think every time we came over there, you could hear yourself go through what was a river, basically in the washout, and your tyres are wet, and then it's just basically clay to the next washout. Going up the hill under full noise with a big hole in their foot at a constant speed, wheels spinning, mud throwing everywhere, and then they throw in some whoopty doos and washouts along the way. So you're over the top of this as well and up there. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was challenging, but good. There was one section just after that where I came around the corner, thought I, to be honest, and I hate to admit it, I thought I had it locked in gear for manual shifting and I didn't. When I'd got back in the car, I'd put it into auto and it changed up and it, that mucked me up and I lost my momentum. So I had to back a bit and start again, lock the thing in properly and go up the hill. From there it was good. Last little bit we did today was a bog hole. I was a little bit worried that the LDV wasn't going to make it through because it's a little bit shorter and it's got all-terrain tyres and stuff, but Jerry showed us how to do it, that's for sure. I started off, just took it nice and easy, got to the spot there and I just figured that I needed to put a bit of power in to get through. It looked like the ruts were getting a bit deep. We had a bit of a laugh because we thought that Jerry put the gear stick through his roof because he hit that hard. But we got through it and we'll assess the damage tomorrow if there is any. There was a deviation path around the outside but that wasn't a whole lot better. We went through there and it was, well again I'm pretty glad I had the road safe underbody protection because I hit pretty hard on a few of those spots there. But a, a ripper track and now we're about to head out onto the main road and head for home. Awesome day, really really enjoyed it. Appreciate Simon for inviting us out once again. Raptor's done its thing. I've unfortunately got to clean it again, but that's just all part of getting out and about. It's been a really good day. We've had some interesting tracks and an awful lot of mud, which is always fun. Can't go wrong with mud. 
some of the stuff we've seen today has just been fantastic. It's one of those areas you just want to come and play.